December the 12th, 1984, and Genevieve's powerhouse, Anthony Fat Tony Salerno, and Lucchese boss, Anthony Tony Ducks Corallo, are recorded by an FBI bug having a conversation where it appears that Fat Tony is complaining about his position as front boss for the powerful Genovese family. Let's check it out. Welcome to OC Shorts, bringing you detailed historical snapshots of the American Mafia and other organized crime. Feel free to subscribe if you like that sort of thing. Today we're going to take a quick look at a conversation where it appears that long-term Genovese mobster Anthony Fat Tony Salerno seems to bemoan his position as front boss for the famous crime family. In 1984 it is generally now accepted that the official boss of the Genovese crime family was Vincent Chin Giganti. According to sources such as mobster turned informer Vincent Fish Cafaro, Chin Giganti had been the boss of the Genovese crime family since 1981, after taking over from the mysterious Philip Benisquint Lombardo. When he assumed the leadership of the crime family, Giganti positioned the highly respected Anthony Fat Tony Salerno in the role of front boss. A tactic used to avoid law enforcement scrutiny that he had learned from his predecessor, the wily Philip Benisquint Lombardo. At this point, I'd like to talk about the title of front boss in relation to the Genovese crime family. Some books and documentaries describe these front bosses as simply potential fall guys and patsies in the event of prosecution from the authorities. However, the list of mobsters who served as front boss since the death of Vito Genovese were all genuine powers in their own right. It is believed that after Vito Genovese died in 1969, the official boss of the Genovese family was Philip Benisquint Lombardo. He had been acting boss for the final couple of years of the imprisoned Vito Genovese's life, having taken over the role from the extremely wealthy mobster Jerry Catina, who had stepped down from the position in the mid to late 60s. After his ascension to the position of boss, Lombardo used a string of front bosses for the next 12 years, including Tommy Ryan Eboli, Carmine Eli Zaccardi, Fonzie Thierry, and allegedly Tony Salerno. It is then believed that Lombardo retired and passed on the reins to Vincent Chin Giganti with Sammy Black Santora as his underboss. So, as we mentioned previously, in 1984, Anthony Fat Tony Salerno, who had once been consigliere and underboss for Benny Squint Lombardo, was serving as front boss for Giganti. On December 12, 1984, at 11.35 a.m., at Fat Tony's famous Palmer Boys Social Club, Anthony Salerno was meeting with his old friend, Lucchese family boss, Anthony Tony Ducks Corallo. The private conversation between these two mob powerhouses was being recorded by the FBI. In the following transcript, we join their discussion where Salerno is telling Corallo about an internal Genovese problem, where he's ordered one of his men to chase away another guy if he comes around the fish market again. So I seen that Carmine. If you ever see that kid down here, give him a boot in the fucking hole. Well, sure enough, he goes down there, and this guy gives him a whack. I'm again up at the fucking farm. This kid goes to his mother. His brother goes to Ben. He sends that wise guy, they were big, to knock that fucking Carmine's head off. I come in on Monday, he's telling me the story. I said, Ben, hey, why the fuck? You, you put me on. You gave me a fucking job over here. Do you want me to take care of it or don't you? Don't you find out what I did or what I didn't do? The man named Ben in the conversation, who appears to have undermined Fat Tony's order, is speculated to have been Benny Squint Lombardo, the former boss. If this is the case, then firstly, it confirms what we all now know, that Anthony Fat Tony Salerno was never the official boss of the family despite his conviction in the commission case. But it also indicates that even in 1984, after his retirement, Benny Squint Lombardo still wielded considerable power. Perhaps akin to the setup in Chicago with Ricardo and Rica, who were still believed to be the main powers in the Windy City, even when they were retired. The conversation continued. Corallo, 
Did you reason with him? Salerno. He, he just lets you know about it. He just lets you know about it. I don't know what to do. I swear I don't. I tried the first time I ever had an argument with him. So fucking disgusted with myself. I said, well, we gotta live with this guy. Yeah, I told him. Corallo. You can't do that. See, you're gonna, you're gonna let this run from here downtown? Is that what you want to do? You wanna, you wanna say, I throw the fucking thing out? You want it, and you have to run downtown when you want something done? Salerno, no, I'll retire. I don't need that. Corallo, I know you'll retire. I know you'll retire. Salerno, fuck that shit. I won't take orders from the guy. Corallo, the rest of the guys you got around here that you, you like, that you made. Salerno, they'll always be here. Listen, Tony, if it wasn't for me, there wouldn't be no mob left. I made all the guys and everybody's a good guy. This guy don't realise that? Some people believe that when Tony Ducks is saying to Salerno, you're gonna let this run here from downtown, that downtown is referring to Giganti and his base of operations. If this is the case, then it could be argued that Fat Tony Salerno was potentially feeling disrespected and undermined by Chin Giganti. As I always say, that despite being interesting, much of this is all speculation. This conversation could well have been an aging long-time mobster just having a moan and a grumble to an old friend. Because as we all know, in the commission case just over a year later, and despite not being the actual boss of the family, Anthony Salerno took a hundred year sentence on the chin, excuse the pun, without even blinking. Let me know your thoughts on the Salerno and Corallo conversation in the comments below. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching.